How many people say, my God is great and my God is awesome. Amen. Amen. We have a word for you this morning. A word that's going to be challenging. A word that's going to get a hold of you and hopefully like it's got a hold of me. It's going to be revealing. So i got to give you a warning. It's going to reveal some things you might not want revealed. It's going to make you aware of some things. Hopefully it will equip you. But most importantly, it's going to challenge you. If you're ready for the word this morning, let me hear somebody say, oh, yeah. Let's look at the word of the Lord then. Turn with me, if you will. We're going to start a series today, but we're going to look in Isaiah, the sixth chapter, the first verse through the eighth verse. This is a scripture. we're all very familiar with but I'm going to show you something today that maybe you've never noticed before I believe most of us would have never noticed it Isaiah the 6th chapter the first verse to the 8th verse if you're there I ask you to give me a good hearty amen before we read a word I want to say how great it is to have Deborah House with us today appreciate his family extended family from uh, the Mobile area. We really appreciate her being here today. We love and appreciate her. Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Let's look at this. I, I, I believe you're going to get something out of this. Let's look at the word of the Lord. It says, In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. And where was he, everybody? Somebody say amen. Real quickly, you know, there's a lot of things going on in our country. Hear me. That want to pull everybody down wanting to pull things down but isn't it good to know in a society that's wanting to pull things down we still have a god that's high and lifted up i want to encourage you friend yes it's bad and things people are getting pitted against one another but don't you fall into the threats and the and, and the holes of the enemy know that your god is high and lifted up the train of his robe it filled the holy house the temple of god train of course is the back part of the robe above it stood seraphim each one had six weeds Two, he covered his face. Two, he covered his feet. And two, he flew. And one cried to one another. And somebody help me say, what did they say? They said, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. My goodness. And the post of the door. Now, this is the throne room of heaven. Shook when the voice of him who cried out. And the whole house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he taken from the tongs of the altar. He touched my mouth with it, and he said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Finally, verse 8, also I heard of the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? who will go for us then I said here am I send me talk to you on a a thought this morning the Lord gave me at camp meeting I want this year pastor general share it with you called killing king carnal anybody ready for this word let me see your hand let's pray heavenly father thank you today for your word oh I feel the anointing in the house I feel the anointing in my spirit God I feel it coming up my spine right now I pray you would help me to deliver this word, Father. Let it be challenging. God, Lord, speak to us, God, and let it speak to us, Father, and I pray that you get a hold of us. Father, we love and appreciate you. and Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done, God. And we give you glory and honor. And all God's children said, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Let me just start off today by telling you what America needs. Okay? There's a lot of things going on. And I, I just let me, can I, I just take a couple minutes, and I don't know, know I don't have a lot of time this morning to give a quick commercial, okay? Can I tell you that there are people on Facebook, believe it or not, that are less than intelligent, that represent about 1% of the population. Let's even break it down one step further, their race, okay? They provoke emotions, on both sides we are the children of God and we you know I was praying this week as it really hurt me for our country but I see people get frustrated by what somebody did that that are so silly and can I just say the word dumb and it causes you to type up a response 
that somebody who's a child of God is going to read, and now that's passing that poison into their soul. Listen to me, friend. Hear me when I'm telling you. There, the, the, this is a debate for the world. But when I was praying, I said, God, the world is so dark. And God said to me, you to be thankful for the darkness because that causes the light to shine. We are the family and the children of God. And you know what? I wish the world didn't hate each other. But even though they hate each other, isn't it good to know inside this building, we love each other regardless of social status, color, sex, gender, whatever. I wanted to pass that on to you. And now let's get into the Word of God real quickly if we can. Just want to tell, tell you that. Don't pass the poison on. Because what America needs today in the midst of all this stuff is to get a vision of what Isaiah got a hold of. Isaiah got a hold of a vision when he said, man, I saw some things. And in, in a day and age where the, my people were drew away from God, I got a hold of a vision and I saw God and he was high and lifted up. Matter of fact, his robe, which symbolizes your worthiness, it filled the whole room. That's how great he was. I mean, I saw some things. I saw some angels that had six wings. Because just evidently two wouldn't do. But they had six wings and were four-sixths of it. They covered their feet and their face because they just didn't feel worthy to be in the presence of God. And with two wings, they flew around. And what an awesome, majestic creature it was. But you know what this majestic creature did? He spent his time singing about how holy and awesome God was. He said, I saw some things. I saw some awesomeness. And that's what we need today, church. In a day and age where the church is losing its way, and God knows America is, we need to be reminded there is a God who's high and lifted up. But I don't want to, I could stop right here and I could divulge more in America's culture, but I'm not going to. I want to talk about the church culture because this is going to do with what I'm about to talk about. Anybody testify this morning that our church culture has gone over a massive overhaul? I, I can't help but notice the giant changes. Changes in how we go about seeking God. Changes when everything has become more important than church. We want a church that bends around us instead of us bending around our church. Anyone else remember growing up going to church, man, three, four, five times a week? You know what I'm talking about? You had... Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, prayer night, Wednesday night, youth night, uh, discipleship night. Then you had a fellowship night, and you was at every one of them. Anybody remember those day and age? You know what your pastors do nowadays? What in the world can we come up with that's going to get people to get out of their chair and realize that fellowship's important and come to church and to support? Brother Brian, am I lying on that? You did it for years. We have to get together and think, what in the world can we do? that will bend around people's schedule, that will motivate them to come and come to church. I've seen a change in that. I, I, I've seen, i tell you something the other day, I heard some no, news that it just, it, it, it shocked me to what I was hearing. It shocked me that I heard that this church, it's not that they had a want, it's had what they didn't want. It's okay to have a preference, but how many people know out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? And I heard we specifically don't want a preacher. Now, this is a Pentecostal church. And I began to think about that, and I've dwelt on that, and I began to think, man, how much has things changed in 10 years? Now, we can come up with any kind of excuse that we want, okay? But when you say, I don't want someone to flows with the Spirit, basically you're, 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 what you're saying is we've become a people that listen with our ears when God intended for us to listen with our spirits. And in these last days, we're propping things up and we're saying, you know, we want to do it a certain way. We want to be entertained and we, we don't want to be convicted and we don't want to be challenged. But can I tell you something? If you want to be spirit fed, you have to be fed from the spirit. But if you want your ears tickled, you want to focus on what's coming out of somebody's mouth. This next generation, I'm concerned because we've raised them to understand that the things of the Spirit are considered kooky. Let's just be honest. We got churches that are saying people don't understand it, so we got to get away from it. Uh, can we just talk real for just a moment? When the Holy Spirit moves, let's say there's the tongues and interpretation. Do you not feel the building sometimes squirm? Don't you leave me up here acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. God will send you to hell for lying, I'm telling you right now. Act like you're talking about. You ever seen something happen spiritually? People squirm. When these last days, people are trying to 
remove the squirming, and I'll talk about that for just a second, but we've talked, and our, our, our kids don't understand these things. They think that we can have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof, that we've told them to be spiritual when God speaks to you, and to go tell a stranger something, say, hey, God wanted me to tell you this. You, 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 we begin to think that that might be a little kooky, but think about Galatians 5 and 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. Now, here's where we're going to get to, the desire of the flesh. We need to see the Lord high and lifted up so we can walk in the Spirit. The problem is today, we're walking in the flesh. We are trying to remove the things of the Spirit because when somebody gets to, I don't understand it. How many people excited about football? Let me hear you. All right, if you ain't going to get excited about football, I better put Jesus down today because we're in a whole lot of trouble. I've seen some of how you dance and jump up and down and high-five people. You let somebody dance for Jesus, though, and bad people go, ooh, that, that made me feel a little uncomfortable. Why? What if they were deep into drugs? What if they were deep into sin? What if they used to be a prostitute and yeah, God saved them and changed their life? Are they supposed to just go, thank you, Jesus? But you let an elephant or an eagle score a touchdown, and my goodness, you'll feel the Holy Ghost all over you. It's nothing to do with society. It's to do with the flesh. And the flesh will always go against the Spirit. So I want to tell you that, that as I begin to preach and, uh, uh, and pray about getting ready for this sermon series, I want to tell you what happened. I'm not going to be able to get on the floor today, guys, because my back's out. So I'm going to stay up here. But let, let me tell you this. During camp meeting, God, I, I had already had a sermon series laid out. I was excited about it. I was working on the graphics. And then God spoke. And I wish I could tell you God just gave me this great thing and it was a super spiritual thing and it elevated me. But in truth, it was the opposite. God spoke to me at camp meeting some things for me to do. And then I heard a voice. A voice that said, nope. That might be a little weird. Nope. That sounds like a lot of um, work. Nope. That will never happen. Nope. You can't do that. What will people say? Now, we would stop here and say, who was that, Brother Donnie? And you would think I would stop and say that that was the devil. But it wasn't the devil. The voice belonged to my greatest enemy, me. It was my voice that raised up. It was my voice that spoke. It was my voice, the enemy that was within me. And then I began to think about that. You know what I did? I went to the altar and I said, God, you gave me a vision. And immediately my flesh is saying no. And right when I began to feel bad about that, I'm reminded of the spiritual matters in Galatians 5, 16 through 17. Let me re read it to you in its entirety now. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of flesh. Look at this, this flesh, okay? Your body, you're a spiritual being enclosed in a fleshly, carnal, sinful body that was passed down by DNA through the sin in Adam and Eve. For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These two are in opposition of one another so that you may not do the things that you please. There's a war inside of us this morning. There's a spirit that God is giving us and telling us the things, the spirit that will go to heaven. But also there's a flesh work, what I like to call king carnal carnal is another word for flesh it's this but you know what even paul said paul said this who wrote most of the new testament he said this why do i do the things that i don't want to do what a wretched man i am that's paul who did all these miracles who shook a serpent off in the fire there's a war today inside of us you better listen to what i'm telling you today friend because you have a king carnal. A king carnal that you know you should be praying more, but king carnal says, no, I'd rather be on my iPad and sit in a chair. You've had a hard day. What about the spirit that says you need to be faithful? Forsake not the gathering of your brethren. You better get in church and be faithful because you don't know what the future holds. But king carnal says, uh, that snooze of 15 minutes ain't good enough. I need about an hour snooze button. What about the spirit that says you better start a fast? You feel God speaking to you to do a fast. There's something to be done. 
God is moving in you, but what does King Carnal say? You want to go two days, three days without eating? <laughs> nope, I think not. I need you to hear me today, friend. There's King Carnal. You have a war inside of you. My question to you is this. Who is ruling your life? Is it King Jesus or is it King Carnal? Is King Carnal keeping you with a rotten attitude? Is King Carnal keeping you talking about your neighbor? Does King Carnal keep you just driving up strife? Does King Carnal, what is he doing in your life? You might say, Brother Donnie, what in the world does this have to do with Isaiah? I want to show you what the Lord showed me when I was praying in that altar because I said, I felt bad. It's like God immediately, I, I felt this thing and I thought there was something wrong with me. But the truth is, friend, that's why we got to have the Spirit in these last days. Because there's flesh and there's deception going on. And if you don't have a Spirit-led church where the Spirit can show us the truth, we might find ourselves getting in line behind people whose doctrines are false. But God wants us to raise up and understand that there is a King Carnal. And there's only one thing we can do with that King Carnal. Kill him. So I told you about the great things that God did in Isaiah, right? And I showed you the vision that we need, this, this church's need. But we get so caught up in the power of the vision that we miss the most important words. And let me show you this. Let me think about this. Let, let, let me drop this on you. As awesome as this vision was, you know, this, this story doesn't start off with the vision of God. It doesn't, friend. It doesn't start off with the vision of God. It didn't say, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Let's look one more time at how it starts. In the year that King Uzziah died. Before King Uzziah died, there was no vision. There was no spirit. There was no power. But in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Now somebody might say, Brother Donnie, that's just a timepiece. No, friend, it is not. I don't have time to go over it with you. You're just going to have to take my word. It is not a timepiece. In fact, I did some studying on King Uzziah. King Uzziah had some issues. I need you to see this. God had a vision. God had something for his church, but King Uzziah had to die. So I said, God, what is it about King Uzziah? And then this is what the Lord dropped in my spirit. In order for the heavenly king to be revealed, the earthly king had to die. God can't do anything in our life the way he wants to do it. Something powerful, something supernatural, something that elevates you in the ways of God to do something in these last days unless King Carnal dies. There's King Carnal in this room. Somebody got to help me this morning, okay? Don't you leave me up here freezing to death on this stage. We got to have the king to die. In these last days, we've got to get rid of the earthly king so God can give us a vision of the heavenly king. And I want to know you want to tell you why, why churches today might be struggling a little bit and why society and our personal lives might be struggling is because we've lost a fresh vision of the heavenly king because we're too busy listening to the earthly king. But the time has come, friend, for the king's head to roll. I know that I've been living with him a little bit too long. I look at what God's trying to breathe in me, and he, he's saying, nope, can't do that. Nope, that sounds like a lot of work. Nope, that sounds like sacrifice. Anybody else got a king in this building? Well, I said, let the king's head roll and long live the king of glory. Let him move in my life. Let his glory shine through. Give me a vision of who you are by letting the carnal king die. The carnal king that holds on to a grudge. The carnal king that makes everything in my life more important than the things of God. Hear me, church. The miracles that God can do in us and through us and our children doing a fresh thing, but he cannot do it if there's an earthly king living amongst us. We have king carnal. King Carnal. I want you to know, God wants us to kill him. King Uzziah had to die in order for there to be a fresh vision. I'm going to show you a little bit about that in just a minute. I don't know who your king is today, but anybody else know what I'm talking about? We have carnality. The church used to be spirit-led, and they walked by the spirit. Now we've become fleshly walkers who occasionally dabble in the spirit we need our leadership to be spirit led we need our pastors to be spirit led but you want to change a city we need a church to be spirit led Amen. 
And friend, right now sitting next to you is a big fat king. I can't speak for you, but my king's fat because he likes to eat. A big fat king carnal that says, no. You mean I got to come and I got to pray more? How many people know? I wish I could tell you that every time I get on my knees that the Spirit of God is there and it is the most awesome hour I spend in prayer. There are some days I'm tired. There's some days I'm in a bad attitude. I know God just said, I just wish you wouldn't even spend time with me today. You're in the wrong frame. (laughs) Go off and come back when you get in a better mind. I understand there's flesh. But can I encourage you for just a moment? There is going to come a day where we deposit this flesh and this flesh is no more. And we can worship God for all eternity without getting weary. And I, some of you know that don't sound too exciting because you don't like to worship here on earth. But for all those of us that love to worship, guess what? We're going to get to go to the throne room of heaven and that's what we're going to do for all eternity is worship God without getting tired. I don't have to sweat because I won't have a body temperature. I just worship Almighty God. So let's look at three things about Uzziah. I want to show you these three things to notice about King Colonel. King Carnal. Number one, I want to show you this. Notice this. That you can worship with King Carnal. This is going to be a little interesting, but bear with me. Because Uzziah, King Uzziah was a, would die a leprous man cursed by God. But the sad part is he worked with God as a young age. He was blessed by God because he walked with God. But because he started off being blessed, I need somebody to hear this. This ain't going to be fun, but I need somebody to hear this word today. Although he started off blessed, walking in the favor of God, he would die cursed, alone, and away from God. Would you like to know why? I'll tell you why. Worship. Wasn't expecting that, was you? Worship. Oh, this is going to be fun this morning. I'm glad I'm sweating because it's about to get cold in here. (laughs) Worship. Let me read the scripture to you. Next scripture. There you go. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for against transgressed against the Lord of God. Now notice this. By entering the temple of the Lord to worship, by burning incense on the altar of incense. This is what he did. So Azra, the priest, went in after him, and with him were 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men, and they withstood him. I need you to understand that. He worshiped. God cursed him with leprosy. Cursed him, and he would go away. That don't sound right. Anybody want to stop here and say, let me get this straight, that don't sound right. Can we be honest? Let's take a little temperature. Who, it's okay, who in the, just in their flesh says, that don't sound right. Let me, let me see your hands. Okay, good, you're being honest with me. Here's the issue with it, because this is what the American church deals with. He wanted to worship. He just didn't want to be consecrated. Jay, he wanted to go and worship like all everybody else. But the problem where the priests were consecrated, that means to be devoted fully to God. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. He wanted to live how he wanted to live. But then he wanted to walk into God's house and then worship like everything was okay. You may all feel that? Well, yeah, cold just then, didn't it? Because today's church has got it wrong, friend. We've made it about worship. Everything's about worship. But you can't have worship without sacrifice. Somebody needed to say it. I just did. It's been that way since before there was a word of God. You can't have worship, Jonathan, without sacrifice. Let me put it to you like this. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 1 that we are to live as living sacrifices. Holy and acceptable. The problem is we've got convinced by the lights and the great music and the hooks and the songs that can get us moving and get us clapping and know, Brother Donnie, I just can't worship to certain songs. No, you just like certain styles of music. It has nothing to do with worship can be done when you're just by yourself. The other day I was just by myself. I made up the worst song in the history of mankind. I was off key. It didn't rhyme. It made no sense, but it was a worship song unto God for what he'd done in my life. 
we want to live the way we want to live. We're infatuated with the world, but the Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Holy means to be set apart, to be different. We want to drink what the world drinks. We want to put on our body what the world puts on their body. We want to go what the world goes. We want to watch what the world does. We're enamored with the world. But then we think because it's about worship. We come in this building wallowing with the world, being a harlot sleeping around in this spiritual age with spiritual other things, come into this building, and God is looking for a white bride, and we want to lift up our hands. But you can't have worship without sacrifice. you got to be holy for your worship to get through. Now listen, none of us are perfect. Anybody mess up this week? I have. But there's a big difference in sinning and living in sin. You need to look at your life and evaluate. I tell people all the time when they're saying, you know, I know they didn't do this 20 years ago, but I've been really wanting to do this, or I've been really wanting to get this. My first question to them is always this, why? Ask yourself why. Is it because King Carnal wants it? Is it because your flesh desires it? Or is it because your spirit wants it? Why is that important? Because if you feed the carnal, your carnal's going to be stronger than the spirit. And we want to know why we don't have the spiritual discernment. When we get guest speakers or pastors in other churches come up and preach and having affairs or doing this, that someone says, how did nobody know? Because we've been feeding our flesh so long that our spirit is dying of anemia. But the good news is if you'll feed your spirit according to Galatians, carnal will die. The flesh will die. Oh, I knew it would get cold this morning, but it ain't slowing me down. It's okay. It's all right okay. I'm, I'm going to preach to myself. Brother John, you, will you help me a little bit? Just tell me so I don't get too cold up here. You understand what I'm telling you? You won't hear this preached at other places. And I'm aware that I might catch some heat for it. Really don't care because it's the truth. Galatians tells me this. The flesh and the spirit are warring together. We come in here because we lift up our hands and we make it about worship. We think we're living right. But living right is when somebody cuts you off and you want to go, "Mm -hmm." I'm getting so angry thinking about it, I just sit in the pulpit. (laughs) But the Spirit says, nope, bless them in Jesus' name. Or when somebody comes up to you and they're talking about you and they hurt you and the flesh side wants to react, but the Spirit says, says, I bless you in Jesus' name. The carnality that makes you want to go wring your teachers of your kids' school neck because the way they're doing your baby with the spirit side says just get on your knees and loose angels and the Holy Spirit in that building. We have got to get to the place, friend, where we start killing the flesh and start letting the spirit live. Is that okay this morning? Amen. All right. Let's write this down and then we'll move on real quick. Think about this, this statement real quick. We honor God with our mouths. But our hearts are ruled by King Carnal. Is this hitting anybody else like it did me? Maybe I'm just a sinner. Y'all just need to pray for me. But some days I'm realizing I'm honoring God with my mouth, but I'm desiring anything but this. We, you know, how, here's a good example. Who wants a litmus test? Let me see you hear you say, oh, yeah. Um, the ones who didn't say nothing, you were right. You don't want to hear this. You want to know what your passion is? Follow your checkbook. That hit me hard. I ain't going to tell you what my passion is, but I'm telling you, I'm working on it. I want to tell you something, friend. Don't honor God with just your mouth. Let's look, let's look at point two and go a little faster. Point number two, notice there's a way to resist King Carnal. Because this is not just a flesh personal problem. Kenneth, this is a church problem. We've allowed, I, I talked to you about those just a minute ago that that don't want people to be uneasy in church. We've created, there's a term called seeker sensitive. So we don't want people to squirm. But the problem is, according to Galatians, they're going to if the Spirit's in the building. Because the Spirit, anybody ever come in the building and just get convicted? Is it just me? But don't you love it? Because that means God's speaking to you. God's showing you how to get closer to Him. If you're in a church and you don't feel that, you better run. Because that means God's ain't in the building. So I come in here and your worship sometimes convicts me and I go, i got to make some life changes. But that's good. It's a church problem. And we've put up leaders 
who want to bring in the masses. They just don't want them to kill King Carnal. You know what the Bible says in the last days? Men will heap up for teachers for themselves to hear what their itching ears want to hear. Honey, we're in the last days. They want to hear a smiling preacher tell you, God's going to bless you. Yeah. But you know what? He's also going to challenge you. And it's the challenge that brings forth the blessing. I'm going to show you this. Then we're going to get ready to go home. It's this last days, this carnality has got out of the believer and has gotten into our churches. And that's where we're struggling. We've got it, and it's, it's flourishing. And people said, look, if we remove the Holy Spirit, and we remove the conviction, then we'll draw bigger crowds because people won't squirm. My friend, I'm not an idiot. I do know that we could fill this place up if I just sat on the stool and just said, now let me tell you all the great rainbows and unicorns that are in your life. I know some sermons like this, some people ain't going to like. But one of these days, i got to face God, and God's going to say, do you know how many people you could have made a change in their life and things would have turned out differently if you'd have spoke what I gave you to speak? What did he speak to Jeremiah? He said, be not afraid of their eyes, but preach what I give you to preach. Friend, we have got to realize in these last days, it's making its way in church. So what do we do? What do we do? Kenneth, come over here for just a second before we get ready to go home. What do we do in these last days? Now, Kenneth's a good man, a, a great man. So he's going to re represent just this evil King Uzziah, King Carnal spirit. He didn't have to look evil. He got evil all of a sudden. <laughs> There's not an Oscar on the line. <laughs> I love it. Did y'all see that face? He was sorry. But this spirit is making its way. And I want you to go up and it, it, it's making its way. And we see it. We've seen it for some time. It's a way to the pulpit. Just like King Uzziah. Go ahead. King Uzziah made his way into the temple. Some people said, hey, King, you really should be doing that. And he said, no, I'm the king. I got bodyguards. I'll have your head chopped off. And he goes and he makes his way in the pulpit. How many people know that this didn't change overnight? We've sensed things for the better part of 10, 15 years. We've just kind of gone with the flow because we don't want to be the weirdo that talks spiritual nonsense. But do you know there's a way to withstand King Uzziah and King Carnal? Look at this scripture with me real quick. So Isaiah the priest went in after him. And with him were 80 priests of Lord valiant men. And they withstood King Uzziah. This is what happened. When the carnal king made its way into the temple, Azra said, it doesn't matter that you're the king. Eighty priests faced down the king and their guard and said, I know you're the king, buddy, and I appreciate you, but you got to go. Well, I'm the king, and I'm a big deal. I appreciate that. I saw your business card, but you still got to go. He was pushing back. His troops were doing it. They were willing to die for the cause. But then 80 priests started standing up and said, King, you got to get out of here. It's not right. This spirit doesn't belong. This is a holy place, and unholy things don't belong in a holy place. So I know you're a big deal. I know you could hurt me. I know that I could fall out of favor. I know I might lose some popularity, but I'm telling you, you don't belong in the holy place of God. And the 80 men of God took and backed out King Carnal right on out of the temple. What we have got to do is be a group of people who are willing to dig their feet in and say, I know you can call me old-fashioned. I know that you're saying my ways are dead. I know you're saying I won't be able to make a tremendous impact this way. But there's certain things that don't belong in the house of God, certain spirits, doctrines, and mentalities, and I will not back down. I will remove it from the house of God. Stand with me, if you will, real quickly. Let me tell you this. It's the spirit, okay? This spirit, if you let it stay, do you know what happens? You get doctrines preached that are heresies. It makes me want to vomit to hear pastors today going against the Word of God and saying, huh, I know what the Bible says, but God, you know, even though he has eternal foresight, he... Uh, he didn't know that things would be different today and everybody would accept it. So forget about all that other stuff we were preaching about for, you know, 2,000 years and because uh, God just didn't have the foresight. Friend, you get heretics stand up. It's going to mislead our children. That's why you better be in the Word of God. You better get in your Word to make sure Brother Donnie's preaching to you right and giving it to you right. 
And if not, you better challenge him. Hear me what I'm telling you, friend. We've got it. Look, we're going to be modern. We're going to make some changes one day that not everybody's probably going to be happy with one day. Who knows? Maybe we won't. But I'm telling you, it's not about the method. It's about the message. We can compromise on the method. One day, I don't know, I might get up here and preach in a tank top. It might be socially accepted. I don't know. It'd be hard for y'all to concentrate with these guns. I'm with you. Ooh. Whew. They would be calling. It wouldn't be no longer we're going to church. We're going to the gun show to see Brother Donnie. Don't get the method and the message confused. The method may change, but my message will never change. It will always be God's word. The third and final thing that you need to understand about King Carnal, you can live with King Carnal. I want to drop this on you. Look at this scripture real quickly. Think about this. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. He prospered. He raised up to be this super king. I need you to hear me, and we're closing, that God did some great things in. And how, oh how. Yeah, that's, you're right. I was about to say that. Good job. Some spiritual mistakes, it doesn't happen. Most spiritual mistakes, it happens over a course of time. But this is how he made his mistake. Look at this. But when he was strong after God had blessed him, he was strong and he had no more needs, his heart was lifted up. Do you know why? What breeding grounds helps King Carnal to live? Pride and strength. We, the American church, if our kid gets sick, guess what? We take them to the doctor. If the doctor's closed, we take them to the urgent care. Urgent care is closed, we take them to the ER. You know what people in Africa, Asia, and South America do when their baby gets sick? They don't have the strength we have. They lay hands on them, and they're seeing miracles. They're seeing, I hope you know this, they're seeing people raised from the dead. Why? Because we've become strong, and we've become proud. I'm closing with this. If there's an issue that is plaguing today's church, it's pride. We all suffer from it. We're proud. Pastors can instruct you. You know what? There's... 10% of people I can instruct in good godly counsel. The other 90%, I wish I could tell you, you, we're not going to be able to hear it. You'll get mad if I said, hey, this is this. You wanted me to tell you this, this, and this. I've seen it time and time again. Why? Because we're proud in our heart. God calls you to dance before him just to be thankful. What's the first spirit that comes in your mind? Pride. We're all that way. I'm that way. But we've got to get rid of this. If we want to see God do what he wants to do in this building, it's not about just us. It's about the thousands that can be touched in this community. My, my altar call is very simple. We're going to pray in just a minute for some sick and those who are going to be having some surgeries. But with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm not going to drag this out. Do you know how I got dealt with my King Carnal? I'm still dealing with it. I dealt with my King Carnal by taking him to the altar. When I was at a camp meeting and I felt God speak to me, and my first thing was all this negative stuff, I felt bad about myself. I went to the altar in a corner over there and prayed. And I said, God, fix my attitude, fix me, kill my flesh. That's why we got to crucify the flesh. If you're here today, maybe you have a king in your life that's operating. What if God called you on a fast right now? What's your first thought? What if God told you to give sacrificially? Right now, God spoke to you right now, said give $1,000. What's the first thought? What if right now, God told you you to start, you're not to miss a service for two years, and that includes vacation? What if God spoke to you right now and said those things? What's the first thing that comes up? Well, can I tell you, maybe that's why God is not speaking to us, because there's a king in the way. If you're here today with every head bowed and every eye closed, and you've been, you just realize I'm dealing with King Carnal in my life. And truth is, we all are. I want to ask you to help join me in these altars. We're going to.